Love struck Romeo Sings the streets a serenade Laying everybody low With the love song that he made Finds the street light Steps out of the shade Says something like You and me, babe, how about it? Juliet says, hey, it's Romeo Nearly gave me a heart attack He's underneath the window She's singing, hey, la, my boyfriend's back Shouldn't come around here singing up a people like that. Anyway, what you gonna do about it? By Juliet, the dice came loaded from the stone, and I beg that you explode it in my heart. I forget, I forget the movie song. That the time was wrong Juliet Hey everyone, welcome to MT Guitar. Today we're going to break down and learn a truly beautiful song, Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits. All right, so this is such a beautiful song and really fun to play on the guitar, very instructive in terms of open tunings. So I'm going to walk you through the open tuning. Mark Knopfler talks about open tunings and how it kind of forces you to create new chords that you're not familiar with and that that can lead to really fun improvisations. He basically says that it led him to this song, Romeo and Juliet. Because you have to learn new chords to try and play tunes around with the open tuning, that then becomes your four chord, mm -hmm. and this shape here is your five chord. Yeah. Okay. And then the lick came. So that's the documentary Guitar Stories. It's on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description. And let's talk about this. We're in open G. So first off, the capo, okay, we're going to be using that. But just get your guitar at open G if you want to follow along. If you just want to enjoy the show, that's fine too. This is open G, all right? Now, if we think about open G, the guitar is already almost in G because of the fourth or second strings. Those are open. Those create a second inversion G triad just in standard tuning. Now we turn the tune, the A string, down to G, and all of a sudden, now you've got four strings that are in G. You tune the E string bass to D, that's the fifth of G. So now you've got two Ds. So now you've got open G with those. Then the high E also comes down to D, so both E's come down to D, which is a chord tone of G, it's the fifth. <clears throat> now you're in open G. So take the capo and plop it on the third fret. Now you're ready to play this song. So Mark talks about how, okay, in this documentary, he talks about finding the four chord, which is sort of the first goal. If you're in an open tuning, you just think, okay, I need to find the four chord because it's going to be in almost every song. And then if you want to find the five chord, you know, you can sort of uh, find it. And then you would pretty much have the three chords that will get you going. He starts on the five chord of the tuning, but now it's the one chord because it's the key of the song. So that makes this the five chord and that the four chord. So the riff. Really nice, right? 
Mark Knopfler is one of the greatest fingerstyle players in the modern era in terms of popular and rock music. He studied Delta blues, he studied country blues, he studied, you know, folk, all sorts of things. Chet Atkins was a massive influence on Mark Knopfler, and he loved electric guitar. So it's a really interesting mix of he studied sort of acoustic fingerstyle players, and he also was deeply influenced by electric rock music. So we're going to zoom in and learn this. There's a full tap of this on the Patreon, including the chord melody that I did, uh, which was really fun to do and challenging to do in an open tuning. If you're curious about this guitar, this is the Martin Alternative 2 Resonator. Not the most uh, sort of expensive guitar or even that high quality, to be honest, but I bought it in my teenage years and I didn't play it a ton because um, the action is very high, as it should be. It's usually played as a dobro with the nut razor right here uh, where you can put it on your lap and I have done quite a bit of that. I've played Dobro on both of my albums, uh, including in some bands. So that's more typically what it's used as as a Dobro, especially in bluegrass and, and country. In blues, it's a lot of time used, you know, in the normal setting where it's where the fretboard is facing away from you and you might have a slide, excuse me, and you know, you're sort of playing with a slide, you know, and that sounds really amazing. To play it fretted is, is quite tough, but if, if I lowered the action and had it set up for that, it would be easier. But it's just a beautiful sound and something to check out if you're into that sound. Um, you know, I'm going to prepare some Delta Blues lessons coming up, so stick around for that. But yeah, let's zoom in and learn this. It's really fun to play. Uh, one thing to note is we got the three chords there, and then he often goes to the four chord. I mean, sorry, the four chord, the six chord especially on the chorus when he sings Juliet here's the six chord okay so you'll notice it's kind of similar to the one chord and that's because the six chord is the relative minor you're just changing one of the chord tones really is what's happening there in the bass um, so really fun to view guitar parts through the lens of an open tuning because it opens us up to new new sounds new voicings and new ways to play and it's a really good way to sort of get lost in the guitar again and feel like it's a brand new wonderful journey so there you go there's my little spiel on open tunings let's zoom in learn this please check out the patreon also remember to subscribe if you haven't it really helps the channel hit the thumbs up and the bell notification all right let's zoom in all right so if you haven't already let's go ahead and get into open g tuning really great tuning to know i would recommend doing it without the capo oh sorry guitar uh E to D on the bass, and then A to G on the fifth string. The fourth, third, second strings all stay the same. That's nice. And then the first string down to D. Once you get there, you're in open G. We put the capo on third fret. It's true that this puts it into open B flat, but to be honest, guitarists, we don't really think of it like that because the key of the guitar doesn't change. So it's still in G. And the, the difference here is, let's say I'm playing with a full band or like a piano player. I would say, hey, by the way, I'm in B flat. Um, but if I'm playing, you know, this song and I'm calling out the chords to some guitar players who all have a capo on, it would be key of G. This five chord is the D, is the D chord, even though it's concert F. We're not going to call it like that. So that's, that's true with any capo. Uh, song you you transpose the guitar to the key of the guitar okay so hopefully I didn't confuse you there now we get our first chord ready it's kind of uh, obviously a new shape here so let's go through this string by string because this is the main hook so sixth string open fifth string is gonna bar the second fret fourth string fourth fret third string is barred Second string, third fret with the with the uh, middle finger, and then first string, fourth fret with the pinky. All right, so now we can get going with our riff. The rest of the chords are easy because it's literally a bar of the A chord and open for the G chord. All right, and then on the verse and chorus, we have this chord sometimes. Uh, I'll show you later. All right, here we go. Intro, hook. All right, so we're going to go through this note by note. Um, we're going to pinch the first and sixth strings together. There we go, like that. Now we do a little arpeggio here, so that's going to be fourth, third, second, 
and then first, third. So that's one more time. All right, once again. Now we go fifth string with a thumb and then a down up with the first finger. You could also do thumb. Or however you strum with your fingers. You might do the whole, all the nails, whatever. But it's a down up after the fifth string. Now our A chord. So we release everything except the first finger bar. We go fifth and first string together, third, second, first. This is kind of a swing. It's not a full swing, but it's a subtle swing. So it's like that. So, so far we have. Nice. Now, G, the easiest chord of them all. Completely open, fifth and first string together. And then a similar arpeggio as the first measure. So it's gonna be fifth and first, fourth, third, second, first, third. Actually identical to the first D chord. One more time. Good. Now we do the same um, bass down up pattern as the A chord. We go bass down up. Okay. Now get our A going again and we go fifth and second together. Hammer on to third fret second string and then first string. So, we've got the whole first phrase. Let's try that. Ready? Three, four. Nice. Good. Now we have variations of that. All right. So, next phrase, same exact start. Everything the same. Now we have this beautiful thing where we do a full arpeggio. Okay, so we go uh, sixth, fifth, fourth with the thumb, third, second, first with the fingers. When you get to the first string, you pull off and you go to an A chord. So you're pulling off this first string, fourth to second fret, and you're also lifting the other fingers. Uh, sorry, then you go second string. So it's last time. And then G, identical as before. This time, after bass down up, A, bass down up as well. Good, now we've got two full phrases. Then the drums kind of kick in, but the guitar part really doesn't change much. There's a slight variation, so let's go through it. Third phrase, same exact thing. We just leave out the first string on the A, so it's no first string after that. Some slight variation. G, same as before. Now I play, I, I, uh, I went down and then third string on, on the demo. You, um, you can just do the same thing as before or do that. It doesn't really matter. Now, uh, fifth, fourth, third, second. Now, four, two. He kind of does, it goes up here. Oops. So let's play that phrase. Um, that whole phrase. Ready? Third phrase. Three, four. Here we go. See? So, um, really that's the main difference there is it goes up to that melody. Then we have a nice variation on this D chord. So the final phrase of this intro, we do fifth and first string together. So it becomes a D over A. Uh, really cool. So that would be fifth and first, then the same thing as before. Now the full arpeggio. Same as before. Then G, same as before. Bass down, bass down on the C. On the A, I mean. Okay, so there you go. There's four phrases, all with slight variations. Um, I was just having a conversation with a student the other day. It's all about not getting too stuck into, I must play it exactly this way. That's fine at first, but eventually you want to have some, some freedom and, and use variations because music is not about fixed, you know, rigidity. It's about sort of a more fluid nature where you've got, you've got variations. You can just sort of mix things up that takes time. So don't worry if that's not 
coming naturally right away. All right, now we're on the verse, and this is really great because he just he just goes down with his thumb, and it's a beautiful sound on the whole chord. So it's a D chord. Uh, love struck Romeo, two bars held. Then a B minor. There's a bunch of ways to play B minor. I'm gonna recommend this way. So you go from D, you keep everything where it is, the middle finger where it is, but you lift the ring finger to fourth fret, fifth string, pinky, third fret, third string. I'm sorry, fourth fret, third string. And I'm muting the fourth string, but if it rings out, it's fine. And you sort of strum down. Then you go A, bass, and then you're, you're done with that phrase. So that phrase is three, four. A love struck Romeo, B minor. Sang the streets of Sarah, A. Okay, now we start to up the, the, the strumming game here a little bit. So again, the same logic applies. Variations, don't get too caught up on every little detail, but I'm gonna give you what I did for a strumming pattern. Um, and we'll see if that works for you, but you can make up your own. Here's the D again. One, two, bass, down, up, down, down, up, for instance, so. Okay, now A, down, up, down. Now the B minor, down, down, down. Now we go to G, down, down, up, and then two to four slide, first string open, that's the riff. You can skip the riff, but he does it still live to this day. It's a really cool sound. So let's take that uh, phrase we just did. Three, four. Laying everybody low with the love song that he made. Okay, pretty cool, right? All right, we're almost there. Now we do the A. Again, I'm just going to throw out some the way I strummed it on the demo and the way he recorded it pretty much, but you can experiment okay so here's the a it's going to go a to g to a but it's a down 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 up down up down, down and then g up down and then a again down 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 up and then d down down and then a little fill here it goes sixth fifth fourth third second string open but before we do that let's cover that uh that section here three four Lie. Steps out of the shade, says something like. Okay, so that last thing here is when he says, says something like, he's going six, fifth, fourth, third. I notice he doesn't do that live anymore, so might be a little too much while you're singing. Um, so you, you could just keep strumming a D chord, but that's the recording. Then open second string and then down a D chord. Down, up, down. So, Second string open, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Now A sus4, so an A with the middle finger, third fret, second string, you know, down, down, up, and then regular A, down, up, down, up. And then there's a, a nice little feel here, here. So that's second, open, second string, second, open on third string, and then resolve on the D. All right, then he does another verse. So why don't we run the verse again, then we'll move on to the chorus. Three, four. A love struck Romeo, sang the streets of Sarah. A, T, laying everybody low. A, B minor to G here, riff. A, sings the street like, here's the G. A, then the D says something like a G. Babe. Here's the A sus A, then the fill. Okay, then the second time instead of the fill, it just keeps drumming, leading into the chorus. Juliet. All right. Now the chorus is actually pretty easy. Um, the hardest part is just playing this new chord B minor in this recommended way, where you have the fourth fret first string. So I'll get there. For the strumming pattern, it's going to either be down, 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 up, or down, down, up, down. Either one. So you'll see me do one of the two, depending on the mood, depending on what I feel like, right? That's what I recommend for you. Just try both and sort of mix and match. Here's the D. Down, 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 up, A, down, 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 up. Now we get to this B minor. I recommend four, mute, 
four, three, four, because I want that high fourth fret in the voicing now. You could just keep doing this if you want to, do, if you want to keep it easier, but I like this sound. So I'm going to do this, down, down, up, down, A, G, down, up, down, D, A, here comes the B minor again, A, G, A, D, A, G, B minor, a movie song, riff, okay? So I went fast there because you pretty much learned all these chords. It's just about putting them in the right order. One more time from the beginning, then we have a new chord I'll teach you here at the uh, just when the time was wrong thing. So here we go, chorus. Three, four, Julie D, A. B minor, A, G, A, T, A, G, B minor, move a song to the riff, okay, pretty, pretty simple, right, just switching the chords, E minor now, here's two, mute two, O, O, two, okay, so, again, there's other ways to play this E minor in this tuning, but I recommend this, you're going to do E minor, for two bars, G, A, B minor, A, T, Juliet, then you do the arpeggio here, back to the riff, arpeggio, G, that's it, now you go back to another verse and chorus, the song just repeats, the, the texture and structure, well, Sorry, the structure doesn't change. The texture kind of changes where the drums kind of back off. and But the guitar part doesn't, which is really nice. It's basically repeatable. It's a classic A-B song, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. The hook is a nice little interlude each time. So you've got the hook, you've got the verse, you've got the chorus, the chord melodies in the Patreon. And um, yeah, really love this song. So please enjoy. Remember to take it slow. Anything fingerstyle can be can be tricky. So enjoy and we'll see you next lesson.